Hello everyone, welcome back to Hands-On Skills. My name is Alex Like, and today we'll be talking about intranasal medication administration using the mucosal atomization device. Administering medications intranasally is a relatively new concept in EMS, but it provides a very useful and reliable route for drug administration. It's non-invasive, it provides a rapid delivery of this medication, and there's absolutely no risk of needle stick to any providers. So that's a really big plus. It can be used in both adult and pediatric patients, and there's a wide variety of medications that you can actually administer through this route. You may be asking yourself, how is it possible that these medications can be delivered intranasally and still be effective? Well, the nasal passages are actually lined with highly vascular mucosa. And in fact, the olfactory mucosa, which is at the top part of the nasal passages, is in direct contact with the brain and cerebral spinal fluid. So the medications that are absorbed here actually cross the, that mucosa and are immediately delivered to the brain and central nervous system. Because of this speed of delivery, the medication's onset is very similar to medications that are administered intravenously. And unlike oral medications, intranasal medications avoid first-pass metabolism that happens in the gut. Now, contrary to popular belief, it's not just naloxone that can be administered intranasally. There are a wide variety of medications uh, that can be used this way, and they can be used to treat various kinds of medical complaints. Other medications besides naloxone would be things like fentanyl, lorazepam, ketamine, and even glucagon, as well as your other benzodiazepine sedatives like midazolam. When you're choosing these medications though to administer, it's important to remember that ideal volumes for administration are gonna be between 0.25 to 0.5 mLs per nostril, with the maximum being one mL per nostril. Any more than this, and the medications tend to run down the throat or run out of the nostrils themselves. This is an example of the mucosal atomization device, otherwise known as the mad nasal, that many EMS jurisdictions use. It's attached to a conventional syringe uh, via a lower lock connector, so it just screws on. There's no needle that you have to uh, inject into anything or plug into anything, it just screws on. The actual device is made up of a few different parts. Uh, there's a malleable stylet here, which allows the device to be bent in different angles uh, to facilitate administration if your patient is in an unusual position. A soft conical plug conforms well to the inside of the nostril, and then the very tip creates a atomization spray, which causes particles to become very tiny. So the liquid component is atomized into particles that are between 30 and 100 microns in size. Now to get an idea of what that looks like, I've shot some footage of the MAD device being used in super slow motion. Here are the steps to actually delivering medications intranasally using the MAD device. So the first few steps are actually drawing up the medication. And remember, we want to keep the volumes low. So 0.25 to 0.5 ml is the ideal volume to go into one nostril. After you've pulled up your medications, you'll attach the MAD device. And then while covering one nostril, you'll insert the device and actually turn it and aim toward the top of the ear. By delivering the medication this way, it's more likely to reach that vascular mucosa and the olfactory mucosa and less likely to go simply into the back of the throat or get lost elsewhere in the hypopharynx. If you point it straight back, ineffective, you point it to the outside of that nostril, super effective. And if you don't believe me, the next time you use a nasal spray like Afrin or Flonase, try tilting it to the side and see how, seeing how much better it actually works. Once we're done with one nostril, we would repeat the process on the other side. 
Same again, pointing away from the nasal septum and toward the top of that ear and delivering the volume. Now, if your patient is unresponsive or is predipnic or apneic, at this point, we would then begin ventilating the patient. Otherwise, the patient can breathe normally and the medication's effects will soon become apparent. Let's take a look at how to administer medications intranasally using the mucosal atomization device. I'll first choose a medication to use for the MAD device. When administering medications intranasally, it's important to consider the total volume that you'll be administering to the patient. Ideal volume is about 0.25 mLs per nostril, but you shouldn't exceed 0.5 mLs. Any volume past this tends to run down the throat or out of the nose. After drawing up my medication, and safely removing my blunt needle, I'll attach it to the mucosal atomization device. I'll administer the medication by placing the device in the patient's nostril, aiming out slightly and depressing the syringe, being careful only to administer 0.5 milliliters. The remaining medication will be administered in the opposite nostril in the exact same fashion. After administration of the medication, I will continue to monitor my patient for any effects. Intranasal medication administration to an unresponsive patient is performed similarly, except after administration of the medication, the patient is ventilated with a BVM to assure that the medication is properly atomized and is able to be absorbed along the mucous membranes inside the patient's nasal cavity. All right, everyone, thank you for watching that video. Now remember, intranasal medications aren't just Narcan. You can also administer pain medications, sedatives, um, and even benzodiazepines to stop seizure activity. It's useful for children who are undergoing painful procedures in order to sedate them. And it's also useful for providing analgesia to individuals where you may not have IV access yet. Hope you got something out of it. I hope you can use this skill in your future career. As always, please stay safe and continue to wash your hands, and I will see you next time.